Today's podcast is brought to you by WarbyParker.com. Get a free five-day home try-on at www.WarbyParkerTrial.com slash S-I-B-S-B. Five pairs, five days, 100% free. Until I met my new best friend All of my boys say I'm tripping When they call I'm not answering They always get my voicemail Alex, are we rolling? We are rolling. Welcome to another episode of Sorry I've Been So Busy. This is the podcast where we talk to very busy people about what they're busy with. Sometimes we talk to not very busy people about what they're pretending to be busy with. Almost made it through without a stumble. We have an amazing guest today. I'm so excited to talk to her. I haven't seen her in a while, and I'm very uh, psyched to catch up with her. She's one of the funniest people I've known in my whole life. Andrew Goldstein is here. At Ange Gold on Twitter, and G E G O L D. My name is Matt Goldich, at Matt Goldich on Twitter, M-A-T-T-G-O-L-T-I-C-H. Yes, you're, you know, top ten for sure. Uh, and Alex, who is one of the least funny people I've ever met in my life as our producer. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know why I decided to take this opportunity to shit on you. How about this? But he's a mensch. How about this? Alex, super mensch, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, and a guy uh, who knows how to produce a podcast, which he's we do super, not Super, super mensch. He does it here at Showbriz out. Studios. What's that? All that matters, yeah, not kindness is what matters. Uh, he does it here at Showbridge Studios where uh, he produces lots of great podcasts like Defend Your Movie, The Carson Podcast, uh, Thought Spiral, a lot of great podcasts. Check them all out. Showbriz, Fat Pig. Fat Pig, showbrizstudios.com, uh, the YouTube page, the Facebook, the Twitter. We got Facebook. We got Twitter, at Busy Podcasts. Check us out. Rate and review us on iTunes. I understand we have a new uh, review. Yes, our busybody of the week is at Marge321. She writes, uh, I believe this was about the Gabrus episode. She wrote, great show. Matt Goldich is very funny. Nice. She did add the T to your name. Spelled my name wrong. I don't care, Marge. It's all right, Marge. You know what's funny? Common mistake. She posted the review on Christmas Eve, which is my birthday. I wonder if that was like a birthday gift to me, this review. Yeah, and it's five stars. What made you think it was about the Gabrus episode? Uh, because in the screenshot, there's the, uh, oh, that might just be. Oh, that's them. my phone. I was listening to a Gay Burst episode podcast. Okay, so maybe phone. not. Yeah. But that was a good episode. You guys that was should a go great back episode. in the archives that was one and of our funny John People Gabris. should check it out. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a tour de force. Yeah. By the way, John Gabris this week, well, this week won't mean anything when you hear this episode, but had, uh, our, um, from Everybody Loves Raymond, the, Phil Rosenthal. Phil Rosenthal. Love that show. Very but excited for you and I have done that podcast. It's just funny to imagine Phil Rosenthal sitting in Gabrus's little yeah, like, home office. with his dog. Yeah, I wonder. That's kind of interesting. Dog and his bong. Yeah. <laughs> I can't um, wait to listen. Yeah, I'm excited for that. How's it going, buddy? Everything's good. What's going on with you? Uh, well, uh, new year, trying to go to the gym. They actually redid the gym that I go to. They they we we know it was closed for a while. New Year, same gym, and then they redid the gym, and yeah. now they've they've uh, redone the equipment. I had noticed the last couple times I've they gone in, they swapped out some equipment. They swapped out all the equipment, all the equipment, and went universal with the treadmills. You had worn down the weights. I guess so. Now here's the Nautilus. Thing. I I had never had a problem with the treadmills. I had had a problem with the TVs where they would only work about like half. The like TVs some, in the treadmill? The, the TV was on the wall. On the it wall. It was a flat okay. screen. And sometimes it was, uh, you know. And so then uh, I came, came in one day and they said, we've replaced all the equipment and all the TVs. I'm like, okay. Uh, the equipment didn't seem to be a problem. I didn't have a problem with the non-standardization of the equipment. There were two particular treadmills that I liked most. But uh, I don't do anything very complicated. I don't have a complicated pattern yeah. that I, you know. So they said we've we've swapped out new equipment. Please be patient with us. We're working out some of the kinks in the uh, the system with the TVs. I'm like, okay, you know, I'll be patient. Fine. So I get on the treadmill, the new treadmill. I work, uh, you know, I, I put in my workout, and uh, on my TV is showing uh, the local news now. Uh, local NBC. Local news. NBC news. Now yeah. I like to. Have uh, with my workout, I listen to music, and I ideally like something that I can watch with the sound off. Typically, ESPN or a sporting event, something that you yeah. know I put on the closed captioning. I watch it with the sound off. I you know I keep an eye on the bottom line, something to distract me, but I'm not sure. fully intent. So I I said, well, you know, let's see what I can find that's better than the local news. Start my run, and uh, cannot none of the other channels work, which they warned me about. You know, working yeah. out the kinks. Now, but can't get the local news back. 
can't uh, even get that. So I'm like, if I had known that I wouldn't, I, wouldn't be able to, I, w- I was like, I would have settled for it. I was like, yeah. it's better than nothing. So now I'm sitting here with nothing on my, uh, yeah. Over the holidays, I watched uh, the local news. And yeah, that's been, a thing you do at your parents' yeah, house. Yeah, and it had been a while since yeah. I watched the local news. And I remember, parents like, love the local news. This is actually really great, the local yeah. news. It's actually just reporting and no opinion. Yeah. I was just like, this is refreshing. That actually reminds me. I don't know if you saw this. There was a news story uh, a couple days ago about a a chain of gyms that decided they were going to ban uh, cable news in the gym. I didn't see that story, but I love it. It's 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 one of the few forms of censorship I think I am in favor of. Yeah, where they said it's not in keeping with our, uh, you know, like we people come here for like an escape and it's bothering people. The only thing I will say about it is. Uh, you know, obviously I would never watch Fox News, but I do occasionally like seeing it on, in an airport or on somebody else's screen just to see what they're just talking about. Just to check on what they're just talking about. Just to check what insane craziness. And, and, and by the way, with the sound off is the perfect way to watch Fox News. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, as opposed to in your house where you actually would have to. There's, they have a show called The Five, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. It's like uh, the, you know, it's like The View. but Just, it's, yeah. It is so bad. Just to see what the Chiron on the bottom of the screen, what idiotic cool. story they're talking they think, about. I mean, yeah. they think they're hilarious. Someone posted a screenshot yesterday of, uh, <laughs> it was right after Trump made his shithole comment, which was like, I mean, even if you are not outraged by it, you have to admit, it's a huge story. Yeah. Right? It's a big news story. Trump called, each, like, calling another country. And the front uh, of Fox News' website was like, Chelsea Handler refuses to apologize sure. for homophobic. The, and it's like, what are you The even? dichotomy is always so funny from, like, the big story the in the news and then what they're covering. That you think this is news and then the, yeah. But anyway, so hopefully Our they top get that 10 shithole countries. Out. Yeah. Hope, hopefully they get that system worked out of my gym. We'll, they'll, they'll work on it. I'm well, sure. it seems you're. Uh, there's always something at the gym. Yeah, for you. Yeah. Well, you too. You talk. We talk about the gym. True. I mean, it's either gym, coffee, lunch. Those are pretty much. Yeah. Gym tan laundry. Gym GCL. Gym coffee gym, lunch. Yeah. Gym tan laundry. Um, let's take a quick break, and then we'll be right back with our guest. Hey, for you, the listeners of the Sorry I've Been So Busy podcast, Warby Parker is offering a free five-day home try-on to give you the opportunity to check out their glasses. I was in L.A. Um, I would say two years ago. And I was walking on uh, Abbott Kinney, and I popped in the Warby Parker store, and I found a great, a, a fantastic pair of sunglasses I still use today. Sunglasses rarely ever fit me well. I have a very small head. Uh, they fit them to perfection on my face. And the thing I love about Warby Parker, you can walk into any of their stores at any time, and they'll readjust your glasses for, um, for no cost. Uh, and uh, you kind of always can tell when somebody's wearing Warby Parkers. They're very stylish. To get your home trial on today, go to WarbyParkerTrial.com slash S-I-B-S-B. Again, that's WarbyParkerTrial.com slash S-I-B-S-B for your free five-day home try on. And we're back. We're back with our guest. We're very excited to have her here. Somebody I've known for a long time, but I haven't seen her in a long time. So I'm very excited to catch up and find out what she's up to. Very funny comedian, actress. Uh, she had her stand-up special, uh, which was called... Only whores wear purple. I have right. a new one coming it. out. Oh, yeah. and a new one coming out. We'll talk about that. And she's on Crashing, a bunch of other things. Rachel Feinstein is here. Is Thank it Feinstein? You. Feinstein. It's Feinstein, but that's Feinstein. fine. I'm Goldstein, and people give me shit. I don't know why I didn't get really? that right, yeah. especially because my, my... It was very big for my wife to to, to figure out if it's Seen that's... or Stein. But I my mom says it's Stein, so I go hard with Stein. I, I don't know why I screwed that up, especially because my wife is a, is a, a, a Stein, a, a Jew. A a, well, she's a Stein yeah. who gets mad when people say Stein. I really don't care because people say it wrong all the time. Yeah, I and I feel like my name is so actively heinous that I'm like, who cares? I just want it to be over when people yeah. are I saying don't, it. I don't actively care when people yeah. say Stein. I'm fine with it. I don't care. But like for the wedding, I was like, you know, Stein. Yeah. yeah. And like she, sure. she had to change her name, the whole thing. Yeah, my but welcome. My, yeah, Thank welcome. You. My wife also. Do you have relatives who pronounce it Stein? Or are they all? No, they much all. Stein? They're all Stein. There's a Rachel Feinstein though, a famous sculptor named Rachel Feinstein. Oh right. And I always get mistaken for her, so I'll get. And she has this very glamorous life, and so I'll get calls for like an offer, and then they'll softly unoffer it to me because right. it's for the more 
like classy, mm. prestigious. Well, Rachel we know Weinstein. about the other Andrew Goldsteins. There's a <laughs> lot of Andrew Goldsteins. There was a subway pusher named there Andrew Goldstein who was <laughs> pushing, people, pusher. pushing people on the subway. The first, That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first openly gay Division I uh, college athlete, lacrosse player. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. As if I'm handing that right and now. I follow, right? Yeah. And I follow. And I kind of makes up for the subway. I pusher. follow a couple Andrew Goldstein or Steens on uh, Instagram. Yeah. Well, Rachel Feinstein. They called me, my agent called me and he was like, they want to offer, they want to um, profile you in Vogue and your fashion choices. And I believed him and I yeah. told everybody, I was like, Vogue's like, notice. Really? And I'm like, yeah. I do have kind of like a boyish, intriguing yeah. thing. Boho <laughs> she, yeah. And I'm like, people are watching, I guess, you know. And then I told people, which is really embarrassing, there was like an mm, evening right. that they were going to honor me. Like, as if. It's so preposterous I that it. I believe this. I and like shop at you. Forever 21, you know. And <laughs> But I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm very classy. And so then they called me and they were like, oh, there's been a mistake. And um, uh, and then they called me also to say that Oprah wanted to meet me. And again, I walked around that week. The cocky. president? Yeah. Yes, exactly. The, our next lovely president. And, I, and then I was like, Oprah's intrigued. It makes sense like that Oprah's intrigued by me. And then I invited this guy I was dating at the time. To, I was like, Oprah. Fred would like to meet me if you want to come with me to this dinner. <laughs> it sounds like oh the my pre- God. This went so far in. <laughs> I know. It's happened so many times. This is the premise so, of like a movie pitch for so you. So now have it's all these great go. thing all these doors Perhaps. open for you because you have the same name as Have you been uh ha- now that you've been burned though, are you more like someone's like, Hey, we want you to headline yes. uh, San Antonio and you're like, I think you're looking for the other Rachel Feinstein and you're like, No, we uh, really want I'm you. Rachel right? Feinstein. Yeah, uh, yeah. I do think about the disgraceful offers that she must get. Just how her <laughs> husband just must vomit every time they get one of my offers. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. Some do you wanna club? open for Carrot Top and uh no Toledo or something? Uh, yeah, I know. And the, yeah. Uh, gathering of the Juggalos is looking for a <laughs> yeah. twenty-minute opener, and she's, she's like, like, "Well, I guess I could. They, scu- I yeah. guess I could sculpt, sculpt in front of the Juggalos." And her husband is like the most well-known <laughs> modern artist. Like his paintings right. sell, and they're friends with Mick Jagger, and their whole life. And like Mark Jacobs made a campaign around her. She was like the face of Mark Jacobs. And well, I'd have yeah. to bring my ceramics yeah. wheel, but <laughs> and then she yeah. gets a call, yeah, to play like the cr- Juggalos crackers. are throwing shit at her, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I remember seeing you around a lot when I was first. We were, I would say, I think we were probably both starting out in comedy in New York at the same time. Is that possible? Yeah. What, this was like, I mean, 2000, I mean, I was starting in like 2002, 2003. And it was I around like that time. You were around a yeah. lot. And we would see each other a lot. And you were like me, as somebody who would do a lot of like uh, non club shows, but then you were also sort of in it. You would do yeah. clubs, and we would see each other kind of both and things. So I remember seeing you a lot. You were a, a very uh, you performed a lot. You oh, were okay. you were like a you were a, like you would I, you would I would see you all the time. Like you were like pounding the pavement. For I sure. tried. I tried to get up as much as I yeah. could, and, but. And it, and on any stage, you were not like shy about like I'll. No, I played in, in a laundry mat. Sure, you know I had a soft taco thrown at me for oh. one of my performances. <laughs> in, not, Delicious. Wait, where was that? <laughs> that was actually at the Culinary Institute of Las Vegas, where I had the soft taco thrown at me. What? That, what? That's very on brand for them. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, it was like it was like their like shitty cafeteria food, and the problem was the reason that this particular fellow and we're now together. Uh, no, but the reason he threw the soft taco at me was because they put my they put me up a, to perform in this kind of box that one of the students found I was just standing on a foolish box it wasn't even a stage and they put the box in front of the microwave where the kids um, microwave their hot pockets and tacos for lunch sure. so I was just an impediment to them microwaving mm. lunch their tacos and they didn't want to listen hear from me obviously but then also i was standing right in front of the microwave and some kid was just getting really frustrated and he um and he threw a soft taco can you remember right. the trajectory of the taco I and do. how the oh, top very things, well what, in like slow what, motion yeah so what happened I what was the, in the taco sorry go the ahead the taco doesn't stay together very no, well in flight no no it's it, a lot it of moving of, parts is what I'm saying. Yeah. It sort of hit the you know my tittage area and then just kind of smeared down on my chest, you know. And I thought of nothing. There was I didn't like couldn't think of any clever way to address the 
horror of what was going on. And I now just collected you're... the taco and and I clung to my material because I was too nervous sure. to like you know respond. Is this to early something. on in your career? Yeah, and they were and they and the audience actively hated me, so they didn't want to hear like what my off the cuff mm-hmm. remarks were. Cut to Rachel yeah. Feinstein, the sculptor, being like, "Why am I getting emails to Taco Titty?" <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah, and thank God it wasn't a hard shell taco. Could have seriously hurt somebody. It yeah, could. those things are jagged. It yeah, could have. very I, jagged. I talked about it on the radio after that, like because I was on the road that like a, in, within a few weeks and and I told the story of this guy throwing that soft taco at me and then and then that night this guy came to my show with a soft taco kind of uh, nervous like bare naked ladies they bring the macaroni yeah. <laughs> yeah and he was like I guess and there was a note he put inside of the taco asking me out on a date wow <laughs> It was really. How long have you been married? <laughs> <laughs> he looked so unstable. He didn't, yeah, it was. He was. Sweating. He clearly didn't get the memo that it was a pretty traumatic experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. winter over. Want to? Yeah, re- that's like... something we would do at camp. <laughs> <laughs> we used to write "I yeah. love you" in cheese. We would take like square pieces of like orange American cheese and carve with a knife like messages <laughs> to girls and on a paper plate. You never did that. It's like asking out uh, Monica Sellis by like bringing her a knife. Yeah. Be like, here, uh, <laughs> it's written yeah. on the yeah. <laughs> You know that was a horrible experience for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Anchorman when he throws the burrito out the window. Yeah. This is good, but it is filling. <laughs> um, uh, that's so funny. I never had... I wonder how much of that is, uh, like, you had a taco thrown at you because you were a female comedian, and how much of it is just, like, comedians get treated like shit. It, it, hard it's to hard, say. To, hard to say in that case. Who knows? Any... any, any what I, the cocktail is itself. Like, what, yeah. how much part's this or that? Oh, yeah. Moly. <laughs> I mean, and, and like, you've always been, like, I would say full-time, do, like, you never stopped doing stand-up, right? Like, it's No, no, I did thing. it all the time. But, I mean, I, I, I was never the person. I did get up. I tried to get up wherever they would have me. But I, I was never, like, great with getting every day, you know, writing. And I, I only write when I have, like, crazy yeah. deadlines. And it's usually, like, oh, I have to do something. And then I panic. It, it was just kind of like I needed some place to go. I'd leave my nanny yeah. job and... Yeah. Oh, you were gonna, nanny too. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, what were your day jobs? Well, the, my first job was at um, Fat Shoes and Clothes on Broadway. And I thought I was so cool because I worked on Broadway and I told everyone in my life. It, I felt like I was like a beastie boy because I worked at like a place called Fat Shoes and Clothes. Mm-hmm. And I told everyone. And my job was just to try to get people to sell – I mean try to sell – jeans and shirts to people coming in and I was fired in under four hours because I just couldn't convince people to buy things. I was like, oh, I'm going to have to try to get That's people to buy things. That's a quick trigger. Yeah. It was really quick and he... And it was so embarrassing. My aunt sent me a card congratulating oh, me on no. my new job. Oh, and I was no. fired within a day. I just couldn't bother people. I, I hate that feeling when yeah. you go to store. Well, it's, it's it's the whole the reason I hated barking and flyering. I know. Oh, it's God. like they make you do this begging and that's the yeah. worst hated thing it. in the world. So... I tried to approach people and it was very gross and people were confused and I was kind of half apologizing. And then I remember the guy that hired me just – he kind of made this smearing indication towards the door. He didn't even say like, you're fired. He goes, this, you can go ahead. Like yeah. that. He was like, you can go ahead. And I was like, go ahead where? Like, come back? Or he's like, go ahead. He just kept saying, go ahead. He's like, go and ahead. Then he, yeah. threw, then he threw falafel at you. Yeah, he was <laughs> a, yeah anti conflict. Yeah. So yeah, he, he's he, like, go ahead. It's, it's good. That's good. And I was like, you mean that's I did a good job? He's like, no, no, it's go ahead, please. So you nannied a lot then? Yeah. Or? Then I nannied and, and bartended a little bit. And, uh, we had Jamie yeah. Leon. She was telling us about the nannying. She also nannied. She yeah. Nannied. yeah. Right. I mean, I loved nanny. I, were, I was really attached to all the kids that I that I worked with and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. nannied with this autistic child for like ten years, uh, so maybe seven years actually. Yeah, but that was like my main job after right. that. While well, while I was doing stand up was, and he he was really cute. So I was would go to all his therapy with him and try to teach wow. him to write and all that kind of stuff. And it was a nice balance between our narcissistic lives sure. and just spending time with. So the boy. opposite of Jamie Lee, who was like I, I couldn't. She had nothing to talk about. I had nothing to talk to these kids about. I couldn't relate. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But also, like, you, uh, I don't know, when you say writing, I felt like a lot of your, I mean, this underplays how how, uh, well-crafted it is, but a lot of your stand-up is getting, uh, you tell a lot of stories about your, I mean, at least, you know, your your family, your mom, I remember. Acting out the characters. Acting out the characters in the story. So it's like that, it, it, it almost... 
it's not giving it enough credit to say it comes naturally, but it, it's not like you would. I mean, I mean, I guess you have to sit down and recollect. A lot of it is practice, is what I'm saying, in terms of pr- mm-hmm. writing it on stage, in terms of the movements and the faces. And yeah, the it's voices like stories, and, the, and yeah. I act out people within yeah. the story. But when I, when I was starting, I just felt like, well, that means I'm not really doing it. Like, you know, I feel like a fraud because I can't right. write like a nice, crisp monologue joke, and I can't write like a, a good, clean. I love that kind of writing because it's so interesting to me. It's just like so fascinating. No, but it's a what? Nice, good. Solid, just a joke. You but know? what you do is so hard to like actually like do all the voices and the character and the faces in the story, and you know, really, and and also just like to you know, it's very specific, but also like relatable. You know what I mean? It's like specific to your life, but it's one of those mm-hmm. things where like anybody, like your, I just remember hearing about your mom. Like the sort of like hippie, like she thought she, she was very uh, into black culture, right? And yes. She was, and this was like a big part of your act, at least when we were doing a lot yeah. of things together. And she you still know, is, yes, yeah. still into black, still part of your act, and still still into black culture. She is. She ma- she majored in African history with a minor right. in black studies yeah. in college, and it just went on from there. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like a character that every. How is Rachel Dolezal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that is crazy. That must have like really. I wonder if that when that went to that story came out did that resonate with you at all <laughs> yes that's what my brothers and i were joking about it all the time oh my yeah because my mom just just nothing jazz look it's her mom's heart. idol yeah. yeah yeah and when she visits me and i talk about this on stage but when she visits me in, in new york and, and she likes to read the name and the uber to the cab driver because she loves like an ethnic name and she likes to kind of bite into an ethnic name and honor it in this gross way <laughs> yeah so we'll get into like an uber or something and she'll be like excuse me sarah hanje you know, <laughs> what region is that <laughs> <laughs> and and then and then she uh, she'll apologize for Trump for ev- with every Uber driver. It's like, oh my look, God. it's so strange. Yeah. Stop doing that. Yeah. You know, she'll go. I want to say that I am so sorry for these terrible things that President <laughs> Trump has been saying about Muslims. And I'm like, stop it. And that's not the way to say it. That's <laughs> the racist way to say it. Muslims. But she does it with yeah. every Uber. And she has five star rating. Nice to meet you, Sarah Hanje. And then every and then she really thinks it went well. She's like cultural bridge built. You know, oh who's God. next? I really like, felt a vibe it. with him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She does it everywhere. She tries to have these kind of ethnic celebrational moments with people, and she yeah. loves to name tag. If we're in a restaurant, she'll read someone's name to them. She just and I'm always like, he hates that you have access to his name. That's yeah. the worst part of his job yeah. in this moment. But she has no ability to see how she's just been received by anyone. She just walks around like fantastic. The one universal thing that unites us all as people around the world is we all just want to be left alone. Like, yeah. Like, please it's, don't it's, bother us. I yeah. know my brother was saying he loves the moment in a haircut where they just like where you've stopped talking to the person cutting yes. your hair and yes. you just fall into that beautiful silence for the rest of the haircut. And I'm, he's like, there's no better moment in life. And that's how I think yeah, so many I people think so. Say, Yeah. Nobody's bothering you. Yeah. He's just a guy <laughs> snipping your hair. And then I remember your shaving your face. Your grandmother was also a, uh, the. She was a uh, character. She was a character with the. the, the I always remember. I haven't talked about her on stage in a long time. It was a pen. That was what I remember. <laughs> that was like one of my first. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, but it was great. I mean, like that's saying something that that was like. I feel like right away you had like a like a thing. You had like a, you had a character and a you know a bit. Oh, well, thank you. That's I nice remember to very, hear. I still remember very. well. I know that's embarrassing when people like bring back to me like my early bits. Yeah. where I'm like, oh, that one was so. Ba-. I'm like, oh, that was like I was even just, just imagining. Out. Yeah, being known in that time. Like even when you were like, I remember you then already. I'm just horrified i'm like oh god <laughs> because it was just such a i was so sad and confused and deranged at that age you know yeah. like i can't even no, imagine sure, yeah. sure but i think maybe we also did did you do premium blend or what did you yeah do? it was, might have been the same year it was damon yeah Wayans. i think so yes that's why no no it was a different season mine was a different guy i can't remember who it was I, oh anyway but yeah I around the same time it. i definitely think feel like you did there was a pen on premium am i wrong i might be wrong i don't remember what i did probably though i'm yeah. sure i did because that was like my main thing i was doing again and again yeah that was your big closer bit yeah when i think about it when i watch old things of myself i mean i just i'm so disgusted i'm just like right. for the it's love so of god shut up i mean what yeah, did you I listen- ever need to say strutting around the stage <laughs> with all this attitude i listened to three seconds of our podcast and i'm like god my voice is that just two weeks ago <laughs> yeah brutal yeah <laughs> who's listening to this? but that's what we've talked about with crashing is like you know it forces you i mean and you're in the show and did you mm-hmm. have you written for the show too or are you just in no it? yeah but it's like it forces you to relive all that it's very very uh it can be very painful but also like really uh you know brings back like 
also like amazing memories of like oh this was like we, we talked about this with Jamie it was like this was a time in your life where you had no cares and concerns yeah other than, no like, that's true there were much. a lot of beautiful memories yeah. too yeah we had wild fun I remember when I I was like roommates with Sherrod and, and he used to Sherrod's former guest to the pod former guest yeah. to the pod yeah yes. and Sherrod One used to favorites. bring Sherrod would have girls over all the time but yes. they had this rule him and Tony that I wasn't allowed to have guys over they just thought it was hysterical to like maintain this rule and since it was under Sherrod's name I had to like obey it and then girls would come through my room to go to the bathroom like you know so I'd have to have these uncomfortable conversations right. with these oh, hi. girls pulling their t-shirts down like <laughs> ugh. and but we also would have so much fun we had this bill at the deli and we would always have to walk on york so we could avoid our mounting deli bill you know right but we we called our place squalor because we lived it was this place was unacceptable the shower was in the kitchen and there was oh, like barely a curtain i love Sherrod to death but i can't imagine living with the it guy. was insane they drove me crazy and they would terrorize you, my Sherrod boyfriend and- at the time and who, it, who was the, Tony Rock? Tony, but he, Rock. Tony didn't technically live there, but he was just over all the time. He was Kramer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then, to, and then Sherrod's littlest brother, they call, who they called Dewey and uh, Kenny. Kenny would they would always send Kenny to my room when Sherrod was hooking up with the girl. So Kenny would this nineteen year old kid would just sleep next to me all the time, and he would just talk about this girl he had a crush on and Stearns or whatever. He'd be like, oh, he would always it. talk about <laughs> this girl with this big butt and Stearns, and he'd be like, oh, Rachel, her ass is so big, I just miss her, I miss her. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, they were. I mean, like it's funny because like, and this is like so many like levels upon levels upon levels of like weirdness for me, where it's like. The time when I was like starting out and like have those memories, I ju- I also had just started dating my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, and her one of her roommates was Oren, who works on the show, and so mm-hmm. like and so I would like I would have like Pete Holmes walking through the hallway at like four in the morning. So then it's like you know like yeah. this crazy like where I'm just like I- I'm like is this show f- like just for me specifically? Like <laughs> that's what it feels like when when you're watching it. But like who else could possibly enjoy this? When he like- pitched it at HBO, they're like who who do you see as the audience? Uh, Matt yeah, Goldish. specifically <laughs> one Jew, <laughs> Matt yeah, Goldish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in New York. <laughs> yeah. Were you close with Pete too? I mean, you know, we were like friends from the scene. I, yeah. I mean that that is one. Of, I mean, like you know, I, there, I had a lot of you know comedy friends, and then it really wasn't until later I always made the mistake of like. Uh, not, well, not a mistake, but I had a lot of friends in New York from college and high, various parts of my life, mm-hmm. and so I never really did that thing where I like fully immersed myself, like mm-hmm. where I like only socialized with comedians. I think it's good and bad. I wish I had done. I wish I had more where it's like, oh, like I was on the show with like all these amazing people, and like I could have like gotten a drink with them afterwards. And I also always had day jobs, so I was like kind of like a nerd about like going home and like getting to sleep and like you know yeah. it was weird. I it was a weird time where I never. And I never fully immersed myself. Like, you were doing stand-up, I would say, a lot most days of the week. And I was always, like, two, three nights a week. I think I always, on some level, knew that, like, I was I was destined for, like, maybe a writing job or something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't – I like that you perceive me as hitting the pavement because I was never the person that would do, like, eight or nine spots. Like, some people would get yeah. crazy with the – I did and I crushed and no. I didn't – no, I mean, I would just hurl myself to whatever the open mic was from my nanny job. But I, yeah. I, I uh, you know, it's it's hard to like, uh, I'm not like after two sets, I'm kind of done. Yeah. yeah. And again, it's all perspective. Like we've mm-hmm. talked about this before, too, how about how there's people that th- that that they're like they you, saw me on two shows their first night in New York and they thought I was the biggest comedian in New York. And I'm like, no, that's the only yeah. time I, I remember yeah. looking at those people and thinking like, I'm a fraud. Those people that were like, I hit six mics tonight. You know, like I was never yeah. like that. Yeah. I get who, fatigued. Who were your uh, peers at that? Like coming up? Like who did you run around with? I guess it would be like, um, Marina Franklin. Sure. Um, and, uh, Jess Kirsten, yeah. we hung out a lot. Uh, this comic, Julie Goldman, um, and you know, then these some of these guys would have me open for them a tell and and Billy Burr. Well, then we knew him as Billy. Like I still, yeah. like, when people call him Bill, it still seems funny to me. Yeah, you know? but yeah, like and so and he lived. Billy lived right around the corner from Sherrod and I, so we would hang out with with him after our spots and stuff yeah. like that. And um. Yeah, I guess I guess those were like my main. That's a good people. class. Yeah, I mean that's the other thing about your uh, comedy is like you're tough enough to like open for Bill Burr, but also smart enough. You know what I mean? It's like that's a hard like. Yeah. 
needle to thread. I mean, not that Bill Bill Barr is obviously very smart, but like you could do the alt rooms, you could open for, you know, you could do everything. Thanks that was how for I saying saw. I like this perception. I want this your voice I know. in We my come head in every day. and we just the, the guest comes in and we just butter them up. That's what we do. We just, <laughs> we just I, make them feel. I have yeah. no formal education, so I feel like people assume I'm smart because I'm sarcastic and Jewish, but I never like went yeah. to college or. Anything. You have the Jewy last names. So yeah, people just assume. Yeah. Well, you're perceptive though. You Thank notice you. things, so that's I'll take that's, it. that's that's important. I'll yeah. take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take it in. Um, should we talk about uh, uh, Rachel's day? Yeah. I kind of want to hear a day about living with Gerard, but that's just me. Personally. That's that's you personally. <laughs> yeah. Is there what? Uh, I can't even imagine. I mean, what do you want to talk about? Was there a day this week that was interesting, or recently that was interesting, or, or a typical? Or, day sure, I'll go through like a twenty-four hour period, starting from one afternoon to the next, because I just thought of something. Okay, this is great. So, okay, so um, I went to this. Uh, mentor picnic at the rock training facility my boyfriend's a fireman and he's so he took me to this i go to like all these firemen dinner dances now and like i have this sub fireman activity life wow (laughs) so how did you meet your boyfriend we were in a fire yeah. We were set up in a raging fire. Yeah. We were set up by a in my loins. Yeah. We were set up by uh do you know Irene Bremis? Sure. Her? I haven't Lovely seen her in a long time. So yeah. Irene is married to a fireman. Okay. And so she set me up with uh yeah, my boyfriend. It was so she brought me to this fireman Christmas party in Brooklyn to meet him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that's how we met. And um and it was funny actually because well, she, I didn't really take it too seriously. She showed me a picture of him, and he was, like, kind of making muscles on the beach, and I thought he looked like a real douche. Yeah. And um, he said later, he's like, I was being ironically douchey, you know? Right. Like, yeah. why would she show you that picture? But, yeah. And, That's uh, what, depending on who the girl he's setting up with, he either pretends to be ironic or – he decides right, to be ironic right. or sincere, depending sincere. on what he thinks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was just, like, a foolish pose. Still get so, it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And okay. then the guy that, that was – that his buddy that was, like, you know, knew Irene because Irene didn't know him directly um, – showed me this text exchange between him and Pete and it was like, Are you can you meet somebody? And Pete wrote back something like single, ready to mingle and then and then he said after he said her we had a friend who used to say that we would mock, like I was making fun of him. He said mm-hmm. they could have made me look like a more of a moron. But yeah. I just expected I'd go to this fireman party and this sure. guy's gonna be a raging fool. But yeah. he was a nice, lovely guy. So and he's also not like I think maybe when you're like the some of the captains or the other guys, like sometimes like I realize as I start this sentence, I'm already regretting it. But anyway, like people at the party would be like, like, cap, cap, can I do this? Can I do it? Yeah, so he's yeah. like more of the adult. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the room. So anyway, so. He's the guy they send to the supermarket to buy 50 pounds of ground beef. <laughs> yeah. I always see those For guys at Fairway. Ch- I'm like behind yeah. the, you know. That's true. Yeah. They're really good at cooking. Yeah, he cooks yeah. all the time. Yeah, because yeah. oh, he has sure. to be good with knives when you're a probie or whatever. So, yeah. so he brings you me. You got the, all the lingo. I just I remembered as I said me. I know it. You know. Yeah. I know it. And now I know all this stuff because they get excited to go to fires. Because when he's on the road with me, like he'll be like, "Oh, I missed a beautiful fire, gorgeous oh, job, I missed a good fire one. on all floors." Yeah, oh, and God. they love they love a fire, gorgeous. Uh, assuming job. that it, it, it really, that no one's everyone perished, gets out safely. Yeah, but yeah, they yeah, yeah. they don't they want to be able to be there. Yeah. If there's a they if get there's to ride fire on the truck. Deal. Like, look, yeah. if there's property damage, people have insurance. The important thing is, yeah, it was yeah. a fire. All right, <laughs> but anyway, so uh, he brought me to this mentor picnic thing because he like mentors the younger guys yeah. so it was like an indoor picnic thing at the rock their training facility so so we went over there and um and uh i was talking to this guy who i thought was like the only hippie in the fire department because he just had this like really kind of gentle way of speaking and he kind of right. talked like this and he was telling me this story of going in this plane like that his buddy has like a tiny plane and that he just loves the freedom of being in the air and flying you know and I'm like if I found and the way he was talking like he just kind of had this gentle voice and I was like if I found like the only liberal in the <laughs> and then he's like and then he goes you go up there in the sky just sit in that plane he's like there's nothing that felt more free just sitting there with nothing but my sandwich on my lap Bill Burr flies yeah, and then he goes, he goes, I'm up there. He goes, nothing but my sandwich on my lap and my gun. Yeah, and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Why would he need a gun? I, I, Why, of all places, you don't need to bring your gun? No, yeah. It's completely you know, it's so funny. I've unnecessary. Never, I've yeah. never thought about uh, a pilot snacking while flying. I've been in one of these tiny planes because I had these, I had you this. You got like an igloo uh, they cooler? They bring little snacks because I've been in one of those little ones because I did this college upstate and I, and my connection flight was literally just Ugh. me and two people. 
Mm. Two people. And it was like flight. I bought like just, con- you know, online or whatever. Yeah. And the guy had a little baggie that his wife packed for him of like yeah. veg veggies and snacks. And that just looking at that made me feel so unsafe. Just yeah. looking Can you at imagine like. The like sandwich bag. Yeah. You get the TS, like there's a crash or whatever, and the TSA is like, the cost is uh, he got mayo in the control. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining the tiny flight, the flight attendant comes around and goes, okay, looks like uh, we got half a PB&J if anybody wants it. <laughs> the captain's like, me, 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 over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you go to this fireman measure picking, you meet a, uh, what you think is a hippie firefighter but who turns out to be all he said, right. I think Super. what he said actually was nothing but the sandwich, the beautiful blue sky. And yeah. my gun. And my gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right on my lap. Just in case somebody is going to yeah. try to attack me in the middle of the clouds. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So in a prop necessary. plane. Yeah. <laughs> in a two-seater um, uh, Snoopy you're like, prop okay, plane. Okay. So I have to. Uh, uh, so what other activities were going on at this at, the, at this picnic? Um, I played with this adorable little girl. We did. We played with her coloring book. Uh, he One of the guys that he mentors and he brought his daughter. So, um, so I got to hang with her. And... Um, isn't that bet the best when you uh, uh, find yourself in a situation where you don't want to have conversations with people and you just latch onto a child? Yes, it is. And you yeah. just say, "I'm going to do whatever you are. We're going to have a catch. That's great. That'll I'll kill see, twenty I'll see minutes. I know, right? Yeah. It actually, it's funny because one of the guys we met. Actually, the lot they're a lot like comics firemen in that like they call regular people civilians. I mean, they have a better reason to do yeah, so sure. than we do. But they have they have these weird, ridiculous lives, you know. And their lives obviously are more powerful because they're saving people and stuff. But I'm talking about like just they sure. live in this house and it's this bizarre reality. Yeah. And then other people walk in and they chat with them. But it's like us when non comics walk up or you know. Do they actually live them. there like day to day? Yeah, they do. I mean, he he does like a couple nights a week. He's overnight at the firehouse. Yeah, yeah. right. So it's like mm-hmm. a long shift. It's a long so, shift. It's called yes. a twenty four. But they yeah. all they have apartments and houses. Oh yeah, nobody lives at the firehouse. Yes, that, yeah. that's yeah. what I was getting at. No, no, yeah. no, no. They just like stay there for the night sure. or whatever. Yeah. In and a cot. So, in a cot, and it's in a sad cot. And I've seen them. They're yeah. very sad. Yeah. But um, do you have cot sex? No, we can't have we can't have sex at the firehouse. No. That's I, a fair question. Though. I just wanted okay, to say right. cot sex. Yeah. Cot he sex. doesn't care for yeah. that question. No, I just wanted to. <laughs> you, you took it very well. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. No, but a lot of people do ask that. But it, it's you can't be like if they did that, that it would be. I mean, can right. you imagine? Yeah, you can't. There can it's not be like no Sherrod's apartment. It's not Sherrod's apartment. Yeah. At the no. end of the okay. day, have some respect. Yeah. So, what's the food so. at this uh, picnic? Um, the chief. There was like, uh, you know, hamburgers and lots of Got meat. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I eat everything. No questions asked. Okay. I'll just stuff anything in my you. dumb face. So I enjoyed the snacks. And then, so we get home from the picnic and, well, this was kind of funny because I, I'm remembering this as I'm talking. So I don't know how compelling these will be, the stories no, will it's be. Great. But, um, he his family always texts me with every question for him because he's not great with so texting. So you're in with the family. Yeah. So his mom will be like, can you please tell Peter to – she's a Colombian. Or she'll be mm-hmm. like, please tell Peter to, that he needs to come on Tuesday for his dad's cataract surgery, blah, 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 blah. You know? And they all text me everything, you right. know, like this plan or whatever. So I'm like the social planner and I handle all this, you know. So I, w- I like – I wanted to talk to him about that, like remember to do this and that, you know. Mm-hmm. And whenever I want to talk about it, something like emotional – I'm always like, let's. We need to have feelings corner on the bed, you know. I like, always call feelings corner, and I'm like, oh, feelings corner, you know. He looks at the spot on the bed we're about to sit with such fear. Meanwhile, I'll go into like a raging, burning building. But right. he always sure. He's <laughs> terrified of feelings corner. He's like, oh, yeah. feelings corner, come on. But he'll yeah. run up <laughs> seventy flights of steps. That's and I'm me. like, it's not a bad feelings corner. It's just a couple of things we need to discuss, you know. And then I'm yeah. like, remember your mom. This, feelings then, corner like, sounds like a 15 minute show on New York One. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, like, it con- or it comes on after a picture pages. Yeah, uh, yeah. Feelings corner. Okay, so you have to have feelings. Like Curtis corner. Lewa hosts the show, yeah. and then it goes into yeah, uh, feelings corner. Yeah. Well, actually, before we had feelings corner, I couldn't. I was trying to look for my passport because we were talking about taking this trip in a little bit, and I was like, "Where did I put my passport?" And we were looking around the house, and I remember he was like. I don't know where your passport is, but I've found some sort of Jewish document in this drawer. <laughs> and I really, and it was just a funny thing to it say. It was the Shema. It was the passport, but I really was like, really? I have an odd Jewish document. <laughs> but anyway, so you look what, by, at my passport. We had your documents corner. from Ellis Island. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Your ketubah. He's like, I've found some strange Jewish documents. <laughs> it was um, the Dead Sea Scrolls. There we go. We're just naming <laughs> they Jewish were just documents. in your. Okay. 
night table. <laughs> so you found the passport. Good. Yes. So we found the passport. And then I was supposed to go to um, – Ben Bailey was having this thing for Cash Cab. Sure. You know? Cash Cab host. So, yeah. Ben and Bailey. so he invited me to it. I wrote and... for Cash Cab back in the day. Oh, you did? I wrote questions for it. Yeah, a long I time I love ago. that show so much. Great. And Ben is like one of my favorite comics mm-hmm. ever. I, I had almost so no funny. interaction with him. I mean, I know really? him. I've met him at shows and things yeah. like that, but it, we, the writing was so separate from the We should have Ben on. Production. We should have Ben on. That's, that's an amazing, that's an incredible Alex, day. get on that. Alex, work on that. <laughs> uh, okay, we're just yelling at him through a window. Oh, this was funny. Okay. This guy I met at the bed. Get on it, Alex! Alex! I feel like they're doing their whole yeah. own thing there. Yeah, right. They seem like they're having a separate Alex party. Alex has a guest. Back. We have an observer, yeah. a, friend, okay. a yeah. friend of mine. Alex yeah. has He's brought observing. a lady to the car. <laughs> <laughs> I regret saying it, and it wasn't Booth funny. sex. But, um... Alex, tons of cock sex, that guy. <laughs> yeah. He's never met a cot. He's never at the ass. That's no, what I hear about Alex him. is brought is bringing in strippers to the firehouse to slide down the pole. He's fully okay. <laughs> That's what I've heard. It's all blowing hookers yeah. with Alex. All right. That's for sure. Uh, so okay, so mm. you, this but, is crazy. So this guy I met at the mentor picnic. Yes. So later on, so when, when I have to take you back for to one thing to explain this. So when Pete was when he made my boyfriend made a captain or whatever, they have this big ceremonies and they're like in these massive auditoriums and the guys come all the like firemen a that works with yeah, mm-hmm. and they all have this big sign and they hold up like Peter Brennan, Captain something, and then mm-hmm. they have their engine number or whatever, and they have these little like celebrations. Yeah. So for the thing, he has to be on st- on this podium. So he's like, hey, text my friend, he'll give you, you know, you can sit with him, and uh, when you get there, because he's going to be up on the podium thing. So I text his buddy. Um, and sit with him for the night. And then I saw him again at the fireman thing or whatever. And he's like, oh, that guy he's just warns me. He's like, by the way, he's like a little nutty. I can't be responsible for anything he says to you, you know? So then they had asked if we wanted to go out for drinks or something, but we went back home. And then I just got this long text from the guy. I mean, long voicemail message from the guy, which was like, he went out. I think he sounded a, aggressively drunk, you know? And he was like, Rachel, I have your number now for the captain's ceremony. And then he goes, I want you to know that I love you. Oh, no. <laughs> and then he goes, it was a great message. It was so funny. And he goes, I'm going to convert to Judaism. And then he was like, fuck Pete. That's great. Yeah. You know? And then he's like, I'm converting to Judaism. He's a captain. He's like, fuck that. I'm, I'm going rescue it, which is like another division of sure. some special squad. He's like, and their color is blue. He's like, we're going to have little blue babies. And he's like, oh, don't tell Pete I left this message. Oh, my goodness. And he's like, ah, you can tell him. Tell him I said he has a baby penis. <laughs> <laughs> And he goes, eh, fuck me. Go fuck yourself. And that's how he ended the message. Sure. Yeah, that's fuck how he me. ends every message. <laughs> Go that's fuck tremendous. yourself. That's tremendous. Yeah. And he hung up. And so I did play it for Pete, who was, he like, got a kick out of it. He good, care. good. Yeah. That's what you want. So yeah, did, he was so, a drunken fool. So so, and then he fired. fired yeah. <laughs> So did you make it to Ben Bailey's uh, so party? This is, so then I go yeah. over to Ben's. He he headed to the firehouse. I go to Ben's thing. And I was supposed to be at this hotel. And... And I get inside, and I thought it was going to be in, like, the main area of the hotel. This sounds like the beginning of, like, a Harvey Weinstein story, but it's yeah. not. So um, so then he was like, I go to the thing. I'm like, there's this cash cab party here. And they were like, no, no, it's in the room. And I was, like, 20 minutes, 15 minutes late or something, and the episode was half done. I'm so embarrassed. I thought I was right. going to be walking in the back of some big yeah. Yeah. party, you know? So I'm so embarrassed. I walk in, and it's just, like, a few of Ben's close friends and, like, his mm. agent in this hotel watching the thing, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I was like, sorry, Hello. I came in halfway through it. I didn't assume that it was going to be, you know. Oh, ben and a couple of cab drivers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, It's got to be clear. <laughs> got to be clear. Is this I a dinner so or is stupid. it a... Yeah. yeah. I was just like, he's like, do you want to come watch premiere of Cash? And I thought it was a party put on right. by the network, yeah. you know. So we go up there. So then I got, we all got kind of drunk. And then I left and I got into a cab to go back to my boyfriend's place. And at this point, it was pretty late at night. And then um, at the last minute, I realized I didn't have my keys. So I – and I had to pee so bad. You know that long cab ride to Brooklyn? I was like, oh, yeah, no. Sure. And so I still have my place on the Upper West Side. So I, I ran to, like, the main area, and I asked this gas station guy if I could, like, pee in his bathroom, and he let me. And then I went all the way back to my place in Manhattan, I get inside, wake up the next morning, and I couldn't open my door. Like, it wouldn't open, you know, because the – um. The doorknob was like loose or whatever, and I don't have a screwdriver. And I'd been telling him like, "Oh, we gotta fix my doorknob," but we haven't stayed at my place in a while. Mm-hmm. 
So he was like, so I call him. I'm like, I can't get out of my apartment. I can't get out. And I had to, you to go to this. In your apartment. Yeah. And I had to go to this serious thing. And the, but the doorknob wouldn't open. Oh, no. You know? And he's like, that's all right, babe. I'll send over some guys. So he sends over. Incredible. <laughs> they come in with axes. <laughs> yes. My super was so furious. Yeah. Yes. So he sends over four guys who were there because, you know, like, He's a cap. They'll get there in like under five minutes. Yeah. yeah. So he sends over and he's like, don't worry, babe. Send it over some guys right now. Wow. <laughs> so. At any given time, a fireman can send over some guys. Send o- that is incredible. I love it. Well, my only experience with fire p- firemen uh, ever was uh, an apartment below me in my second apartment. Somebody left uh, something on the stove and the whole thing. Every- my apartment filled with smoke because we shared like a, a- – uh, an alleyway mm-hmm. type of thing, or a, I don't know. I I'm not using my words correctly, but anyway, my apartment a shaft way, a shaft way. My apartment filled Very with smoke, good. and I called, and, and I was like so Jewy. I was like, oh, it's not a big deal. You don't really have to. And like as I'm getting it out, these guys come barreling up the stairs, and they have <laughs> they had no regard for your apartment. They just oh, wanna, they don't care. They, they just want to find where the fire is coming. Because yeah. at that point, I didn't know that it was a stove, and they're like tanks are knocking shit over, and they're yeah. and they don't they just destroy. Destroy. It's not their prerogative is to daintily, you know. That's exactly what my super said because my super, he doesn't call me back very quickly and I need to get out. I had to get to yeah. serious, you know. They'll so. knock down doors. They'll... And that's what he said. He's like, they're destroyers. They're Why would you call them? They will destroy everything in yeah. sight. And but it's part I was of like, the game. yes, sir, they are destroyed. Some Game of Thrones yeah. shit. And you come you and clean really up their pieces. You can't really fault them but... for it because no, they have yeah. to be. So they break down the door or they what? They broke down the door. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> my super was so angry. And then you're like, I got to go. By the way, this is really embarrassing. But by the way, as they were breaking down the door, like axing through my door, they're like, it, you know, it's they were like, "Are you okay in there?" And I'm like, "I'm scared." <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, I was like so hungover, and I'm like, "I look terrible right now." So I was like, as they were banging down my door, like fixing myself, and I think I changed shirts maybe once sure. or twice. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, "This is a good out, effortless outfit." And, then, to have and that, yeah. other, that one fireman came in. He's like, "Rachel, <laughs> <laughs> I banged down your door." <laughs> So I did two really embarrassing things. Fuck I did that change tops as they were banging through mm-hmm. the banging down my door. And then I put up his, he had his class A's, like his uniform at yeah. my place. So I put it up near the thing just so they would like remember he was a captain. Kind of maybe yeah. I thought that would like help things along. I'm like, I don't really know what I thought was going to happen. I mean, they'd it's already like a PBA banged the door card. down. Yeah, but it is. And I, he, he, you, he gives you one of those like things you have for, for parking too, which yeah. is great. You know? Oh, that's great. Uh, it just says fire department something so you don't get tickets. Yeah. But, um. Anyway, so they came. Damien through. Lemon has one of those. He yeah, we talked. That was sweet. very uh, big. Uh, was a, old we talked callback. for like forty minutes about parking on the. I know. On the Wait, uh, yeah. if this were a morning radio show, I would totally be like, "How quickly can you get a, a crew of firemen into right into this that, apartment?" Yeah, that would be. That's <laughs> it would a be good, like a Howard Stern. That's how right. we get shut down. Yeah. <laughs> like, how quickly, exactly. How quickly can you get three firemen <laughs> yeah. into the showbiz? Um, studio? They were there in under five minutes, and then they once they they got through the door and they were standing in my doorway. I was like, they just kind of hung out for a little, you know, and yeah. there was like a chief with them. I'm like, why was like, there a chief? Hey, this is nice. Yeah. yeah. And, and then so I was like, try, like, should I give them something? So I gave them a bottle of wine, like, yeah, we can't take this or whatever. Yeah. And then, and then they, and then they leave and the super screamed at me, like top of his lungs yelled at me, yeah, about, well, yeah. and, knocked, they, they, which I know they knocked the door down, but he doesn't call back and I had to get out of yeah. the apartment, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then I was going to be you too late for serious ground. anyway. So I had to cancel it. And then. I was supposed to go to therapy after that, and the guy comes over to to fix my door, and I'm on the phone with my therapist, and he sent over like this guy, one of the porters, to fix the door, and he doesn't really speak very good English, but I had a complete therapy session right next to him about the conflict I had with the super. I was like, he yelled at me. Why do I care that somebody doesn't like me like yeah. that? Meanwhile, the guy's sweeping up right next to me. That's his boss. That's so, funny. <laughs> so strange. <laughs> This is but, quite the day. I feel we, like if you're da- if you date a that fireman, that was like a twenty four li- hour. Period. Yes. I feel like your life is very exciting if you date a fire. fire it is a funny person. life because our lives are so different. But sure, yeah, but it's fun. But you know, similar in some ways, like yeah, you said, the, yeah. the clubbiness of it. Yeah. The uh, the the odd hours, I imagine. Yes. Yeah, and then it's nice too because like. If I want to go, if I have to go work, he can come, he comes on the road with me all the time because he just works two days in a row and then he can just go wherever. How many know. days a week does he work? Sometimes it, well, I mean, he'll work like. Which is really a podcast about him. Two or three yeah. days a week or whatever. And then the rest of the time. Is he very on. cognizant of like leaving the gas on, like on your stove? Like Rachel, did you check? 
He's not really like a worrier, but he does tell me a no, couple of things. he wants fire. He wants fire, right? Yeah, He's, that's his business. <laughs> yeah. He needs it. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be like, don't let the, like, clean the lint out of the thing whenever I'm... Oh, the I dryer. The dryer fires are much more common than you think. Mm. You got to clean that lint out, boys. Yeah. That's yeah. what I came here to say. Right. We should have him on. If Same with your it. belly button. If he'll do it, we'd love to have him on. Yeah, of course. We would, lo- I would love to... Uh, yeah. A fire person a fire it has to be a fire fight you say fire you know it's fire fighter they say it's, fire fighter. it's two <laughs> syllables are each word it's, fire fighter. it's so interesting now Ugh, obviously having a, a two uh, almost three-year-old son i would say um fire engines and firefighting is probably one of the top two or three topics we read most about in his books and i it's so hard not to say fireman but you can't say fireman you have to say firefighter because i mean ah, realistically pronouns there, there are not a lot of fire women there are not i, I don't think that it's offensive to say it's fireman not, it's not offensive but you want to give the impression that anybody can do it fire broad. Like you don't want to fire broad Fire, but fire, also, broad. but fire, <laughs> fire chick, but also fire woman. Just sa- fire woman sounds like some kind of um, like a like a spirit, uh, like yeah. a, you know what I mean, like <laughs> what, a Native American, with, yes, uh, exactly. you know, fire woman or holding something. fire sticks, yeah, two exactly. fire sticks running through the night. I picture yeah, yeah, yeah. her very well. There, I mean, are there any female firefighters? Yeah, there are. I there met are. one of them. We went okay. to the house, and and uh, her and her sister be. are both firefighters, yeah. and uh, she was really cool. She took me into like she gave me a tour of their house, and she took me into her area. Um, and she showed me her locker and she showed me how she had this like Barbie firefighter doll, oh, which was really cool. Yeah. yeah. She was really cool. Yeah. Her sure name was Dina. They all live in Staten Island. True. <laughs> True. Most of them do. Yeah. I mean, he lives in Greenpoint, but yeah, most right. do, yeah. I think. Yeah. Greenpoint. They all, res- they all eventually end up in, it's just like yeah. Jews in Florida. Yeah. yeah eventually. Exactly. Yeah. Staten Island. You know where they're going, certainly. Well, that was quite a wild uh, 24 hour period you had. I mean, it's one of the weirder ones I've had. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. I tried to take a, you know, a really fun loving day. No, that was good. You really uh, embraced the concept of the podcast. Yeah. (laughs) But let's get to the blow off. Yes. Uh, Is there a time recently you've uh, blown somebody off, or do you have a typical go to uh, blow off excuse? Technique. Well, okay, this was a while ago, but, and this is not typical, but I could tell a blow off. Great. Please. Love it. Okay. Um, Irene, that friend we were just talking about, she – there was this, this kind of uh, needy person, you know, in my life. And she would do stuff like she'd call me in the morning and be like, I'm feeling really icky. Something's up. I think you need to come over here. Like I had to Oy. report to her feelings. You know, every day – it was mm-hmm. a lot. So I had to – I tried to kind of slowly break up the friendship and – but it wasn't really quite working. And yeah. so she was like, you know what you need to do, sweetie? You have to put her name in an ice cube. <laughs> You can freeze her out of your life. What? <laughs> and it is an abs. And I know that that is insane, and that there's no part of that that is real. But I also like stuff like that. It's like yeah. I, I'm kind of like I'm half in. Yeah. You know, like Irene has this pendulum that she asks questions to, you know, and it sways one way, and it's yes and no. And even though I know that this is nonsense, it's not I science. still I still want to do it. I'm like, ask the pendulum. Do you know yeah. if this was an original idea of hers, or had she heard it somewhere? I think it's probably like an. I I imagine that it would be like something her like Greek grandmother taught her yeah. or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she was like, sweetie, she always calls me teenager. She's like, teenager, just put her name in an ice cube. (laughs) So you you wrote her name down on a piece of paper? She did it. I didn't do it. it, but And then you froze it in an ice cube. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? And then that person just died. Yeah. No, she moved away. Really? Wow, yeah. it worked. And it was only the ice cube and yeah, no Yeah, the ice cube thing. completely <laughs> changed the trajectory wow. of yours say, and her life. That and her pendulum will be right a lot. It'll be yeah. crazy. It, and But you know it's nonsense. Of course it's nonsense. Yeah. Well, but at the same time, look, We talked sometimes... Long Island Medium with uh, John sure. Partridge. Yeah. I mean, That's nonsense, it's... but also very real. I mean, the weird thing is she, she had this psychic friend. I do believe in a little bit of that stuff. And she had this psychic friend and and – I don't know. I'm starting to tell the story, and I'm like, it makes me look insane. But I, there's maybe there was a grain of truth to the ice cube thing. No, I mean, if it helped, I mean, psychologically, I could see it, <laughs> it, it, it help you get through it. You know sure. what I mean? Like it no, gave I mean, you, it, it's it gave you the nonsense. psychological freedom to sort of, you know. Of course, it. it's nonsense, but you, I did feel like it's handled. When you were locked in your apartment, you should have called her, and she's, I'll freeze you out of your apartment. <laughs> yes, there you go. That also works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so crazy. Do the, does the per- and the person is out of your life now? Yes, indeed. Person. Indeed, wow. they are. Yeah. It's also how Rachel breaks up with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> writes their name and puts the. Put a ship them. in a bottle, send it away, yeah. and we're gone. Yeah. Normal blow off is, well, in a phone call, what I'll do sometimes is just 
hang up suddenly and then I just act like the service went out. Yeah, and then send a well, text. Sorry Patrice, about that. Patrice was his bit. His go-to bit was to ask you a question, and the second you start to answer, he'd hang up. That's when you hang up, right? That is pretty smart. And they all do that to each other, by the yeah. way. Like Billy and Patrice and like Keith and all those guys used to call each other up yeah, in the car all whole... the time, and they'd ask. But a we'd question. be on production calls with Patrice for Web Junk, and then he'd be like, "Hey guys, uh, one, one last question," <laughs> and we'd be like, "Okay, what?" And then it would just be click and dial tone. <laughs> It is so funny, though. Yeah, it's still. I <laughs> they mean, would it do such still un- holds up. They would do such unspeakable things to each other. And I remember when yeah. I first hung, like, I didn't know Patrice that well at all. But like, I remember one time I was in the car with him and Keith, and I was reading a book in the back Keith seat, Robinson. Keith Robinson, and I was reading Catcher in the Rye. Oh that was such God. an innocent, silly book to be. So I was reading it back, just curled up and. And, and then he turned around. He's like, what are you reading? Yeah, it bugs me. You and your stupid book pose yeah, infuriate me. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, you and your excitement around your dumb book. You know what? And then he just grabs the book and throws it out the window <laughs> yeah. oh, on man. a highway. That's basically them. I remember one time Kevin had cart had this big sandwich and, and in the car. It was like this gig I was opening for them on and this massive long like sub. And he's like dressing it and putting salt and pepper and – He's like, you can't wait to eat that sandwich, right? Can't wait oh, to get God. your sweet mouth on that sandwich. Yeah, yeah, you're hungry, aren't you? He's like, I am, you know? And then he just took it again, hurled it right oh. out the window. <laughs> I mean, that's the best prank. It's something with steaks. It's got to have real steaks. You know real what I mean? Steaks. They used to invite each other out to dinner. Like the new guy, like, come, we're all going to take you at dinner. Like, it'll be Colin and everybody and Bobby Kelly. Yeah. And then when the guy would get to dinner, they'd have a nice big meal, and then they would go to the bathroom and they'd look at each other like we know what we need yeah. to do now and they would all slowly leave and then he'd have some $400 check which is yeah. not really a joke as much as just a very just a cruel thing to do. Yeah. To Bobby's like, having right. like a resurgence. He, he just he did a couple late night sets and stuff. He, Bobby's doing amazing. Awesome. Yeah. So funny. Yeah. I just Cracked did his up. podcast the other week. He's the best. I love Bobby Kelly. He's yeah. hilarious. Oh Those man. Those are good times hanging with Patrice. This has been so fun and so funny. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. in. Thanks do you have anything you want to plug or mention? What do you want to bring up? You have so you're you're doing a new special, but that's not that's well, not recorded yet. That is recorded. Oh, it is recorded. Floors wear purple, but only, I don't have a wear... date. There's just okay. a net. I have a Netflix special coming out in March, but we don't have the exact. Only horse exact wear purple is on Comedy Central, right? I yes, remember that. And, and I'll then... be in the next season of the stand-ups, which will be on. Netflix, oh, that's great. which is a half hour love those, those are special. quick yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. A nice quick one and then um and you're in crashing and i'll be in crashing on um january 14th and um and there's this little true tv show where you act out the the sife sounds yeah sife sounds show which will be cool and that yeah. airs on the 24th of january you're that's a very awesome. busy person and where can people find you online the uh twitter. at rachel feinstein on twitter and uh okay. rachel-feinstein.com Okay, I'm and not just the sculptor, and just yeah, just so people <laughs> but you have can it Google straight. Her. She's very give pretty. us her uh, website <laughs> stuff too, just so people know which one not to go to. I don't know what her website okay. is. Don't, but don't please throw tacos. Google her. She's yeah, and you'll see her luxurious yeah. life. Um, don't throw tacos. Cool, but um, and we'll 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 get you on Oprah. Thanks, we'll work guys. On yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, real quick, the last time I saw Patrice, uh, I saw him outside of. of like an MTV building and I was like oh my god Patrice I was just thinking about you and he goes I never think about you and he got in his car and he left <laughs> now that so painful is a blow off <laughs> yeah I never think about you you can never you can never we spent like three years together that yeah. is a cute working one. together anyway I don't uh, think he means it no that was his way of saying I love you yeah, I love you and yeah. I'm in love with you yeah there you go uh, thank you so much thank and I'll convert you. to Judaism for you stay busy everybody. stay busy <laughs> they only get my voicemail cause I'm busy whenever I go with her say I'm busy and I'm gonna hit you later cause I'm busy busy with her